Consider that the planet Earth has been a habitable planet for millions of years. You know, we, could, we could have been here with the, with the dinosaurs and breathe the, maybe it would have been a little more oxygen rich, maybe a little hotter and steamier, but we could have survived. And what I'm going to show you with these guys is they're not quite human. There are some characteristics that you'll see that, uh, apart from their ginormous size, lead me to believe that they're human-like, but certainly not homo sapien human. Not at those heights. Um, and if you consider that Earth has been a garden planet, is what some ET races consider this, for a long, long time, I'm also going to show you that these guys might still be around in some very remote areas, possibly underground. In fact, there have been over 200 giant digs in contemporary times that have been documented. Uh, but there is a media blackout on this. Ever since about the 1950s, perhaps it would change the whole narrative of who we are, similar to what uh, speaking about extraterrestrials would do. We would have to rethink everything about ourselves. We'd have to rethink our theology. We'd have to rethink evolution. We would have to rethink archaeology. And we would have to rethink who, who we are. We don't really have to go into whether it's real or fake, but there were photos of him with the Japanese royal family. This is some big sumo wrestler guy. It actually came out by WikiLeaks for the first two release it, and WikiLeaks has a pretty good reputation for releasing real material. So the, just consider this uh, an example of how big some of these guys are. And mind you, I would contend there could still be some alive today on Earth, and we'll go into that. Famous. So this, this was a, uh, a dig near Kigali, Rwanda in 2011, and it actually got picked up by some media sources in Russia and elsewhere. These, I think, are the most authentic of the pictures. And now I'm going to start showing you some features that do not make them quite human, including double rows of teeth. Of course, the massive size of the skulls. Um, when this dig was found, most people are extremely superstitious in third world countries. And people just cleared out of the village, just ran away. Oh, they're digging up demons, and you can see. A little over a year ago, we shared the story surrounding a mysterious discovery that was once claimed to have been made deep within cave systems within Ecuador, which some believe were originally man-made. A discovery that, although now concealed from the world, was photographed, studied, and documented thanks to the array of artifacts which had been amassed by an individual known as Father Crespi. An entire seemingly alien metallic library, complete with hundreds of sheets of gold, platinum, and other precious metals, hammered out to reveal an astonishing unknown language, clearly left by a people of tremendous capabilities. The caves in which this find is claimed to have been made is known as Cueva de los Teos, and although such discovery is denied by the Ecuadorian authorities, the Ecuadorian and interestingly United Kingdom's governments funded an extensive search of the cave systems soon after the claims became public. It attracted the attention of numerous individuals who traveled into the depths of these caves as the enormous seemingly man-made caverns which are found to be within the cave systems. We feel, if these cave systems are indeed one day admitted, as having been artificially hewn from the bedrock, then this would undeniably reveal tremendous flaws in academia's claims as to the geology and indeed true history of the area. The cave system is so enormous, it has yet to be fully explored by modern man. Yet what has been explored has revealed highly compelling features, which corroborate earlier claims of an artificial origin. The Moritza portal, for example, named after Juan Moritza, the individual who claims to have originally discovered the metallic library, is clearly of an artificial nature.
my doubts about the existence of the underground tunnels vanished as if by magic, and I felt tremendously happy. Moritza said, passages like those extended for hundreds of miles under the soils of Ecuador and Peru." End quote. We feel the question now is, who went to these unimaginable efforts so far back within history? Why create such a place deep within the Earth with such an intended illusion of natural origin if you did not seek to hide something? Many still believe that the truth is still hidden deep inside its unexplored caverns. Seen in this 2003 test, the mother of all bombs is dropped from an aircraft using a parachute to drag it out of the cargo bay. The sled detaches and the bomb falls to earth guided by a GPS system designed to be accurate within 10 yards. The bomb was dropped on ISIS forces in Nangarhar province in the eastern region of Afghanistan near the Pakistani border. We targeted a system of tunnels and caves that ISIS fighters used uh, to move around freely 